everyone. Welcome to a very special um, Wildcat Hockey interview. Doug Santelli with Owen Edwards with you, uh, sitting down with hockey coach Grant Patolny. Uh, Grant, um, just give me just a um, just a quick preview on how um, this season is going to look this year. I know with COVID restrictions, um, how has practice been going and uh, other off ice stuff going with the team? Yeah, yeah, good, Doug. Um, you know, obviously getting back into it, uh, the summer was unique because. Typically, athletes come back and, and they're in fantastic shape. You know, that, that's just been like the evolution of the player, right? Even you go back, even when I was playing, you know, guys would, would, would train to a certain degree in the summer, but uh, it was never to the extent that guys do now. I mean, guys come back and, and they're in phenomenal shape. So this year was different. So, you know, some guys had access to ice, some guys didn't, some guys could get into a weight room, some guys were just trying to run hills and sprints and stuff like that. So when the year started, um, you know, we were, you know, very cognizant of, of guys, you know, soft tissue muscles. So, so hip flexors, groins, abdomens, um, you know, things like that. So what, what we ended up doing is we had, we had three groups and we would go on the rink three times a week. So that's how it started. Then we, we did that for three weeks. Then we got to two groups and we would go down three times a week. And then we got to, you know, now we went, we're, we're with the whole team. So we did three weeks of, of three groups, three days a week, three weeks of two groups, uh, three days a week, uh, three weeks of four days a week with the whole team. Um, and now we're just going to keep you know, going five days, six days, stuff like that, leading up to that first game. Okay. Um, so now is the whole team be able to practice as one, or are you still going to be having those groups um, going into the, um, as, a, as, as the season gets closer? Yeah, no, we're, we're with the whole team right now. We're still separated in three locker rooms, um, you know, just to, to make sure that, um, you know, we are keeping our distance. Because when you're on the rink, um, you know, the CDC has said that, you know, within 15, 15 minutes of close contact um, is where you start getting nervous about the transmission of the virus. So um, we wear masks on the ice, uh, players and coaches. Um, you know, we, we keep our distance. And, you know, throughout a whole practice or – I, I, I know that there's not 15 minutes of close contact with any individual player. So, you know, we've kept all that, um, you know, in, in regimen and in line. Um, you know, the next kind of progression as we get closer to games is, you know, moving into the same locker room and, um, you know, starting to do some things that um, will probably replicate a, uh, what a game will look like. So, you know, that, that'll be coming down the pike here soon. Okay. Um... Now, I know we won't be able to be able to go to Wisconsin or go to North Dakota. Um, how bummed are you that you're not able to go back to your hometown in Grand Forks to play um, your, your home state team? Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's, it's everybody in, in society today. And, and you know, there's um, you know, those inconveniences is what I call them to our players. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're healthy and, and you're able to practice and compete and, um, you know, you go to class in person, you know, there's a lot of people that have it. You know, have had this this virus has caused then the inconveniences it's causing us. So um, you know, the way we look at it is you approach your 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 own mindset every day and, and how you attack it is how your day is going to go. So um, these it's just with the reality of, of what's happening right now. And you know, there's going to be things that change. You know, it's going to change. You know, in, in two weeks, and then it might change again in a week. And you know, you, you just you have to just continue to push forward and move forward. Um, you know, with, with, with as much positivity as you can. Now, um, will these non-conference games be made up in the future, or are they just going to be forgotten about and uh, they'll never be played until until scheduled again? Yeah, um, I would say almost all of them will be made up. Um, you know, the only one, how it will fit in the schedule is a North Dakota trip. Um, how that's going to work out, I'm not sure. But, you know, we'll, we'll have dates with Wisconsin, Boston University still told me they're coming in here. Um, Still working with, you know, working with Duluth now. We got an agreement with Duluth for home and home with them. Um, you know, Colgate's coming in. So, you know, we're, we're, we're continuing to schedule um, non-conference dates. And I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work. I don't think anybody is. Uh, I don't know if, you know, you just restart it next year or if you play the back half of it and then you play the, you know, maybe we were supposed to go to Wisconsin this year. They were supposed to come to us. Do we just have them come to us and then, then return to them? Um, some of that stuff is still kind of, you know, to, to be determined until, you know, we can kind of get what's right in our plate right now going, which is 2021 season. 
Right. Um, now with this time off, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you guys have had time to work on stuff that have never been able to be touched on in practice. Um, how prepared do you feel for the season upcoming pretty close here? Yeah, I, I've said to the players, you know, I, I think every team's going to be the most prepared they've ever been for their first game. You know, in a typical season, you have one week of practice and then you play. Um, now you have some time before that, but it's, you know, it's mandated. It's, it's two hours a week. It's, you know, certain, certain things that are four hours a week, certain things that kind of get in the way of it. But, um, you know, we play our first game November 25th. And at that point in the season, you should be in mid-season form. So just because that's our first game, that doesn't mean that we can that we can be in preseason form or you know September form. You know we've had all this time to prepare for these games, so you know I, I do think the team that uses this time the best um, is going to have an advantage just coming out of the gate. Now, um, now before we move on to talking about last season, um, this year you have made Joe Nardi captain and Ben Newhouse in an alternate captain. Is there any particular reason that you haven't chose anyone to that? Um, that's anyone younger to wear the A? You know, Doug, I, I, I've always felt that, you know, that, that, that the team chooses the captains. Um, it's their room. Um, that's the representative that they would like to have, um, you know, on the ice in the community as the extension of a coaching staff. So um, I, I've never chosen them. You know, it's always been a vote. And uh, if we would have had a younger player that was, that was voted, um, you know, and, and I don't always have three. You know, if there's if there's two guys that are overwhelmingly have the vote, then those two guys are going to be, be the ones wearing the letters. But if you know there's a year where there's you know it's it's one, two, three, and that third guy is much ahead of everybody else, and we probably have three. So, um, you know, I've never chosen them. I think it's important that the players choose them, um, and that's who they decided. Perfect. Um, now talking to the last season, um, you guys went 18, 16, and four overall. Uh, and then 16, 11, and 1 uh, in, in the WCHA. Uh, you finished third in the conference, and you went down to Plymouth last year for the exhibition game. Um, that was pretty fun to go to and experience that for myself. Um, do you feel that, that that playing that first game prepared you better for the season to figure out how your players work together? Yeah, it, in a perfect world, you play. Exhibition games have, have um, unless you're playing an opponent that's going to, um, you know, pull the best out of you, um, I don't know how I how excited I am about them, and you know I think you see some of the scores in college hockey of of, of playing a team that um, you know the end of the score is six or seven nothing, and um, you know I think it gives you a false sense of of maybe who you are and a false sense of um, you know maybe a little bit of confidence that that you haven't earned yet. So having an opportunity to play the national program, that's definitely not the case. You know you, there's first round picks on that team. Um, you know, future NHLers. So you have to play a, a good game to win the game. And, you know, if you can schedule them every year, you know, that's something that um, I, I definitely would continue to do. Now, is there hopes of them coming up here next season? Yep, they're on the schedule to come up here next season. They'll be okay. up here next Perfect. Um, now, uh, coming into the middle of the season, coming in November, you guys only had uh, one loss. And uh, that was from um, Michigan, uh, from Michigan State, starting from October 11th, uh, and then you guys went a whole month without losing, um, five four in overtime to St. Cloud. Uh, just talk about having only one loss for a whole month, and then kind of going into a little bit of a slump, and then coming out of it. Yeah, you know what I, um, I thought we played very well to start the season. Um, you know, had to go on the road and, and, and come out of BU unscathed, and um, you know went down to Ferris, this tough place, and came out of there with two wins. So. Um, we were playing very good hockey. You know, there's going to be an ebb and flow to every season. Uh, you know, and, and and I felt like there was a little bit of, of mid-season swoon. Um, we got it back, you know, after after Christmas. And then, you know, down the stretch, we, we just had a hard time um, with our injuries. It was just, I'd never seen anything like it. Um, you know, we had, we were dressing 10 players at forward. Um, only eight of them were actually forwards. So we had two defensemen playing forward. Um, we were still light, you know, two spots up there. Um, you know, that, that, was, that was difficult. Um, you know, Griff Locker was, was playing pretty much um, on, a, on a foot that he would wear a walking boot all, all week for and, and you know, kind of get it ready for the weekend. And then 
he'd go all week with barely practicing to get it ready for the week. So, you know, when the conference league score can't practice, that affects you. Um, so, so some of those things obviously mattered, and we lost Tanner Vesio late. Uh, but, you know, I, I to me, um, you know, I, I think the way that um, the end of the year down the stretch finished, um, you know, it, it's something that sits in my craw still a little bit. Um, and I, I was um, real emotional about it at the end of the year. And, you know, maybe, maybe time heals the emotion a little bit, but um, right here, you know what, I still feel it. And um, we're going to be prepared to play. And, you know, we're, we're ready to, to take that next step as a program because, you know, getting to where we've got to, you know, finish second, second, third, um, you know, we've kind of been knocking. And, you know, you can't keep knocking on, on people's doors. you got to force your way through. So um, it's time for us to force our way through that glass ceiling and, um, you know, become a premier team. Now we'll talk about injuries. Uh, in the first game of Michigan State, you lost Jet Jungles. Um, what does gaining him back on the offensive line do for the team? Jet looks good. Um, you know, I think there there was always going to be a little transition period for Jet. You know, whether it was last year coming coming straight out of high school, which very rarely does that happen anymore. Most kids play junior hockey, so you know, Jet was going to have a little growing growing pains last year anyway, which we knew and, and we're going to work through with, and then. You know, you compound that with an injury, you know, him coming back this year, um, you know, it was kind of the same thing. We we knew it was going to take a little bit of time for him, and I, and I do think this extended training camp has really helped him. Uh, you know, Jet and I, I had a conversation about two weeks ago, um, you know, that that um, was just a reminder that, you know, how good of a player he's always been and um, or what, what he can – what he – the physical tools he has and things he can do. Um, kind of from that point on, um, he's really kind of jump-started you know, the, the rest of his game. And, um, you know, he looks really good. Now, with, um, with him getting hurt in that first game, do you think that's from not being able to play or, um, or um, not from playing juniors, not having to build up that, um, that level of toughness yet? Or do you think that was just a very freak accident and that it, it could happen to anybody at that, at that rate? Yeah, it was just a weird deal. Um, it was a weird hit. Uh, usually somebody, you see, you see an injury and, um, you know, there's some violence to it. Um, you know, it was just, it was a weird injury. And, and he actually, you know, when you talk about toughness, he actually finished the whole rest of the first period um, on a torn ACL. And, you know, for, you know, whether it was the, you know, whatever it was that, that allowed him to keep going, you know, because he just, he's like, I'm okay, I can keep going. And when a player says they keep going, then keep going. You, you know, you think, well, we'll evaluate him after the period. Um, you know, because guys get dinged up all the time. They hit all the time and, um, you know, it's your shoulder or whatever, and all of a sudden you kind of work through it. So, you know, Jet played that whole first period on uh, tour and ACL, and, and he goes in to, to get his, his leg evaluated and, um, you know, takes his shin pad off, and whether it was the tape holding the, the knee in the perfect spot or whatever it was, and he just, boom, his, foot just, his leg just gave away. So definitely not a tough position with that jump. Um, take a look over at another um, at another freshman star, um, Andre Gontos. He had he had 22 points. He had 11 goals, 11 assists. Um, what did you like from Andre that made him stand out a lot? Andre's got great quick twitch. Um, he's got real good hockey IQ, uh, and, he, and he plays hard. You know, like 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 Andre is a guy. If I was a player on this team, I'd be in the coach's office saying, "I want to play with Andre." You know, like because you know you're getting an honest effort out of him. So. Um, I expect a, a big year from Andre. All right. Um, uh, this season, um, we have four goaltenders. Uh, we just added Connor Reckman from Stevens Point in D3. Um, how's the rotation going to look with four goaltenders? Um, one of them, John Hawthorne, is um, physically unable to play right now, so that, that gets you to three. Uh, you know, Nolan Kent was the that played the majority of the games down the stretch at the end of the year. So, so Nolan's going to be in the in the mix for starting goaltending, and um, you know, I think the other guy fighting for that crease is Connor Reichman, and and Nolan and, and Connor are going to battle it out in the, in the fall camp. And um, how we're going to play him, I don't know. I don't know if we're we're going to alternate games if we're just going to play one guy. Um, I don't I don't know that answer yet. Maybe you can answer this, um, or maybe not. Now, coming from D three to D one, is there much of a of a big difference? Is it 
is it much of a of, of a faster game? Is it more aggressive? Yeah, I, I think all of the above. Um, you know, Connor was Division three hockey. He was thirty three and all with like a nine forty save percentage. Um, I think Division three hockey is better than the USHL. So if you had a guy coming out of the USHL that was thirty three and all and a nine forty save percentage, you'd be pretty excited about him. So um, you know, now you got to you got to do it in the game. Um, you know, that's for sure. But Connor was a very good goalie in junior hockey. Um, you know, his high school screwed up on his transcript and, and he was one um, half a credit short of being eligible for Division One hockey. Um, no fault of his own, unbeknownst to him. Um, you know, they just, they, they classified a cla uh, one of his courses differently. So Connor was actually committed to Boston University uh, to go there to be their starter um, and then couldn't get in. So ended up, um, going to play division three hockey. All right. Uh, oh, and you can go ahead. Oh, you're froze. <laughs> All right. Um, looking over at, uh, at, at Schultz and Vanderbeck coming in, yeah. in the middle. Oh, uh, never mind. You're cutting out. I think we're losing you, bud. Sorry, coach, in advance. Okay. Well, we're away for him. Um, looking at, at at Schultz and Vanderbilt coming in the middle of the season in the second semester, um, and they came in against Bowling Green. What did um, what did those two add uh, coming in the second semester and getting those extra points in the um, in the league and in um, and for nationally? Well, I, you know, I think AJ's impact was immediate, and he's another player that he only played eight games and then he got hurt. Um, in those eight games, he had eight points. Um, the weekend that he um, came off um, being the WCHA Player of the Week was when he was done for the rest of the year. So. Um, Losing AJ was a really, really big blow for us. Um, having him back and healthy um, is going to be very important. Um, you know, and, and I thought Brandon did a good job, um, you know, bringing some energy and, and creating a little bit of offense for us. Now you said, um, going back to last season, um, injuries also played a big part. Do you think also taking bad penalties was also kind of the story um, of last season? I, I think – there's a couple players that, um, you know, probably wish their numbers were a little bit lower than they are. Um, you know, the thing about the thing about the penalty box is, 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 you know, the game is evolving and it continues to evolve. Um, you know, maybe 10 or 12 years ago, um, you know, some of these hits that, that uh, you know, some of our players have, or when our players get hit even, um, coming through the middle of the rink, um, in the rule book, you know, a lot of those are what, what would classify as, as hockey hits. Um, I think we all understand the game is changing and, and big hits in the neutral are, um, are deemed dangerous now. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's an area that, you know, you just, guys just got to evolve with. You know, that's, that's the way the game's gone in the NHL and uh, college hockey and junior hockey. And, you know, it's just the evolution of players, you know, playing on that line. You can't play over the line. Right. All right. Am I working now? We can hear you. Go ahead. All right. Perfect. So what I was going to ask before I started cutting out was there's a lot of new freshmen on this team this year, a lot more than there was last year, and newcomers from transfers that are now eligible to play. So who do you think is the most exciting person that's incoming this year? Well, I think it's kind of a two-fold question a little bit um, because, you know, David Kiefer's in a position this year that, um, you know, he's been going to be given some off offensive responsibility. Um, he's a transfer from Michigan State. And, and I'd put probably Jet Jungles in that category, even though Jet's not a transfer. He just – he was here last year and he couldn't play. So, you know, th those two players probably are, um, you know, maybe a little bit ahead. Uh, of the rest of the group in, in, the, in the terms of transferring. And I would throw Connor Reichman in there too. You know, we're, we're expecting, you know, it's, it's hard to expect a lot out of a freshman, um, but we're going to expect, you know, so, some responsibility out of Jet, Connor, and, and David Kiefer. 
Um, in terms of freshmen, um, you know, I, I, Mikey Colella, um, he's a player from the BCHL that he's just gotten better and better and better. And, and when we've gotten into more team things, Mikey's looked better. Um, you know, I, I like what, what Mac Byers has brought. Um, you know, I, I, I like um, Noah Gansky he looks, um, looks like he's doing a good job on the blue line. So, uh, you know, we're, we're expecting some, some important uh, contributions from, from this freshman class, and, and they're going to be in put, put in spots where you know, hopefully they can contribute on the penalty kill and five on five and work their way. You know, Connor Merritt looks, looks very good, um, work their way into a, maybe even a power play role. All right, and uh, kind of one more one more question before we wrap things up. Uh, just kind of want to say, obviously, we don't know the status of fans at the Barry this year, but obviously, if there was, it would be a very minimal amount. So there would be not a lot of students, not a lot of like extra kind of fan support. So do you think that would affect the performance on the ice in any way? You know, I I think we're all going to miss the fans. Um, you know, especially our fans. You know, even you see my background. And, um, you see how how great our fan base is. We're we're obviously going to miss them, um, you know. But the the reality of it is is we've been practicing and scrimmaging and um, in an empty building kind of for you know about three months now. So um, you know I think there will be some excitement just to to see somebody else across the other side of the sheet, um, even if there are a limited amount of fans. But um, you know there's no doubt um, you know we're going to miss our fans. All right. All right. Now, before we wrap it up here, because I know you have to get going here, um, this is a very young team this year. You have 11 freshmen, nine sophomores, eight juniors, and you have three seniors. Um, talk about being here at um, here at, at Northern long enough. Now, these are all your recruits now that are that that are on your team. Yeah, you know, and um, we're excited about them, and um, you know, I think you'll you'll see them maybe a little. Um, uh, a little, little different player than maybe, you know, I think, I think a lot of people felt like, um, you know, I, I just, I, I didn't care about size and I wanted to be small. Um, now that was never the case. Um, you know, I, I, I think the first year we got here, we were recruiting talent and, you know, that was the number one determining factor on players we were looking for. And, um, some of those guys happened to be smaller, um, you know, now, if you have a, a couple full recruiting um, classes in here, and you know, I bet you that the average defenseman in our program is 6'2", 205, you know, and, and, you know, we have one defenseman under six feet, um, you know, and we have three or four guys over 6'2", so, um, you know, we're definitely, um, we're definitely continuing to try to get bigger, so uh, that's kind of the update on uh, recruiting and where it's at. All right, Coach. Well, thank you so much for um, um, just for sitting down with us and um, discussing last season and uh, this season. So, all right, so I'll let you go, and uh, um, hopefully um, everything goes with this season. We get games in. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Bye. Coach. Bye. That was hockey coach Grant Patolny here joining me and Owen. Uh, thank you so much for listening and hope you enjoyed the interview. Uh, games are coming up on November 25th. Uh, that's the first game at the Barry, but they will not count in the WCHA as the season will start January 1st. Um, taking a look over um, at the first game, they will play Lake Superior State on the 25th. Then they will uh, uh, they will have Tech here first, and then they'll take a short little jaunt up to Houghton and play them. Um, these games will not count um, in the WCHA, but they will count nationally. So these games still do count, but just not in uh, the league. But uh, very excited to hopefully get a last season of the, of the WCHA here um, before they join the new CCHA. All right, for Ducks and Telly and Owen Edwards, thank you for listening. And uh, if you'd like to hear more, you can listen to our show um, on 91.5 WPX Friday Sports Hour coming at you from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Otherwise, you can also listen uh, on Mixler. That is M-I-X-L-R dot com slash W-U-P-X. All right, thank you so much for listening and have a great weekend, everybody.